This is the Velotrip Fold 1. It might just be one of the nicest e-bikes I've tested out for the price that it comes in at. It is suitable for a wide variety of use cases, whether you want to take it out for fun going camping or use it as an everyday commuter. And the nice thing is it folds up really easy in a compact size so you can take this e-bike anywhere. I've been riding this for a little bit now, and I am pretty impressed with this e-bike for the price. At the time of this recording, this bike was released at $999. And I know a lot of other e-bikes in this price range that don't even come close to what this offers you in terms of features and the ride quality. I'm a little bit under the weather. If I sound funny, deal with it. <laughs> <clears throat> the C-Bike has 20 inch by 3 inch tires so they're a little bit wider to give you more traction and they also have a decent amount of tread on them as well so you don't slip out if you're riding in sand or slippery surfaces so that's really nice. Also comes with metal fenders to keep the bike a lot cleaner. You can see that it also is paired with front suspension so it's going to make for a little bit smoother ride especially if you're taking this off-roading a little bit. It still should hold up fine if you like going camping or on trails like that. Comes with the headlight and tail light integrated into the bike. This has a seven speed trigger shifter, which feels really easy to operate and actually use versus those clunky thumb shifters. I like these a lot better. And then it also has hydraulic brakes, which makes it feel really nice when you're stopping. And it brings the e-bike to a stop really abruptly and safely. So I really like the brakes on this. A lot of e-bikes that have 20 inch wheels on them will sometimes feel a little bit smaller and more condensed. But the nice thing about this is it has a pretty decent decent size handlebar setup so it's still going to feel like you're in an upright position and it's not going to feel too small for you. The other nice thing that if this is too big for you you can raise and lower the handlebars actually to get it to your desired height. That's a nice touch just to accommodate more different rider sizes. The seat bike also comes with an included rear rack that is actually welded right to the frame. So it's a little more durable and stable versus those third party accessory rear racks. This has a max load of 120 pounds, which a lot of times those third party ones will max out at like 50 pounds. So this gets you a little more weight and it just feels a lot more durable back here. The seat bike is also IPX6 rated and the battery is IPX7 rated, which means you can take this out in the rain, you can get it muddy, you can spray it down with a hose afterwards and you're gonna be fine. I feel like a lot of other e-bikes don't even come close to offering this. So it's really nice that you can actually put more wear and tear on your bike and not actually have the concern that you're gonna damage anything. After a nice little bath like that, wipe the seat off, power around, Flip the kickstand up, pedal assist one, we good. Now on top of all those features, this is also a folding e-bike. So the handlebars fold down, the frame folds in, the pedals fold in. So this makes it way more condensed if you wanna store it somewhere. And it makes it really nice if you wanna travel with it and throw it in a car or a vehicle. It's really easy to do that because it folds up so nicely. I also like that they put these little rubber stickies on the frame here so that when it folds into itself, it's not gonna scratch the paint from the metal and then it also has this little velcro strap if you want to strap it together while you're traveling with it so it doesn't come unfolded just by bouncing around so it's really nice that it comes with this as well now when it comes to the riding performance of this e-bike it's very versatile as well you can actually choose to set a top speed on it whether you want it to be 12 miles an hour or all the way up to 28 miles an hour you can choose how fast it goes that way if someone younger than you is riding it you can just choose to have it go slower for them but if you're zipping around town you can have it go all the way up to 28 miles an hour so that's really nice it also has a 750 watt rear hub motor which at this price point is pretty impressive a lot of times you'll see e-bikes with only a 500 watt motor or sometimes even worse like a 350 watt motor so it's really nice that it has this much power in this to get you up hills and get you around where you need to go it has a max range of 55 miles on one trip but if you're using the throttle a lot it will probably more like 45 miles on one trip which is still really impressive for an e-bike and then it also has 180 millimeter <coughs> oh my goodness <coughs> i'm sorry 
It has 180 millimeter disc brakes on it. So braking on this felt really comfortable. I never had any issues with it. And the ride quality in general felt really nice. This has a cadence sensor instead of a torque sensor. So it's not quite as adaptive, but it's really easy to pedal. If you're using this to cruise and go on rides without having to put in a lot of work and energy, the C-Bike is gonna be a really good choice for you because the cadence sensor works really nicely. The responsiveness of the motor is pretty immediate. So when you're pedaling, the motor's right there, kicks in and gives you assistance. And one of the nice things about being able to change the top speed level is if you wanna just use this in very slow speeds and you just wanna cruise and meander at like seven, five miles an hour, when you change the top speed limit to 12, then it adjusts all pedal assist levels, one, two, three, or five, to be within that range. So then it's just very nice and calm e-bike. But then if you crank up the top speed to 28 miles an hour, then it will give you more power, more assistance as you go through those five different speed levels as well. To be able to change the speed limit, you're gonna to wanna to hold the power button and the plus button at the same time for 20 seconds. It feels like quite a while, honestly. And then it will bring you into the speed limit settings and then you can change it from there. I have mine set to 25 right now. The display is nice. It sits off to your left-hand side here. Very visible, even in the bright sunlight. I can see it really nicely. Has your miles per hour, trip, odometer, power level, all those things like you'll typically see. But Looks like a nice display and it gives you room if you want to mount your phone or something else on, on the handlebars up here. Two things that could be a little bit better on this e-bike is the springs in these pedals to fold them up sometimes work a little bit funky and get stuck and then you're like fighting them a little bit. Um, so that's like one thing that could just have a little bit better folding pedals. But then the other thing that would make it really convenient to take the battery out would be if the seat folds up. I know a lot of other e-bikes where you like lift this latch and the seat folds up. That way you have better access to your battery. That would be nice if they implemented a seat like that. It's still not bad taking it in and out, but it would just be a little more easy if the saddle was out of your way. So for $999, this feels like a steal in my opinion. I feel like this should be the baseline for every e-bike at this price range, having hydraulic brakes and suspension, nice tires, great battery. The battery is also UL certified, so it's a lot safer. It's been tested a lot more. So just all these features are far above a lot of other e-bikes that I've tested in this price range. The one thing that I don't really know about this e-bike particularly yet is how it's going to hold up over time. I haven't had this for a year or multiple years to really test it long term to see how it holds up. But initially with all the features that this comes with, I feel like this is a really great value for the money that you're going to spend. So there it is, developed a cold one. Check it out if you want to. link in the description below and I'm going to go take some that drill or Sudafed or what people take to feel better these days. I don't know. Something. Something.